All right, here we go. Any topic, the topic today is scams. Um, I think I told you when I closed on the property, the newest scam that everybody was warning about, realtors, lawyers, basically that you will get emails, phone calls, telling you that <laughs> you they will help you get a certified copy of your deed or 80 plus, you know, whatever dollars so that you'll spend it with them, you know, to get it. Don't do it. Most everywhere that there is a deed, all you have to do is go down to the courthouse where the deeds are kept and you can normally get it, get it totally free. Um, sometimes there's a little bit of a cost, but usually it's free. So that's the first scam. Now, there are quite a few other scams, and of course we always we all know about the Nigerian prince, you know. Uh, the other scams are when people tell you that their loved one has died and they have no children or whatever, and they want to leave you so many millions of dollars, but they need your help to get it out of the bank, blah, 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 blah. So basically, they reach out, touch you, and they want you to send the money so that you can get the money out of the bank and you never see anything. You just see a loss of your money. The other one is the grandmother, grandfather scam, where they'll call on the phone, Grandma, I'm in jail, or I need help. You know, blah, 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 send money. Don't fall for it. As always, call your grandson, whoever it is they say they are. Uh, around here locally is the Policeman's Association or the State Police Officers Association or the Fire Company Association. You know, that they need equipment and, you know, your, your donations are very important. That's a scam as well. So keep those in mind. There's tons of them. But there are a lot more. And of course, there's a new one. It's online dating hoaxes. Woo! Cyber criminals use online dating apps or social networking sites to strike up conversations with unsuspecting potential targets. After cultivating a, a relationship and earning your trust, they will need funds for a plane ticket or some other expense and ask you to wire money or buy a gift card to help pay for it. Here's how to steer clear of that. It's never a good idea to send money or give the number of the back of a gift card to someone you've never met in person. Even if they have professed their love for you and say they can't wait to visit you, be cautious about sharing too much personal information on online dating sites or apps. And I'm going to tell you about another one. If you send a check or wire transfer through your bank, contact the bank immediately to stop payment. You'll also want to report your experience to the FTC, which is the Federal Trade Commission. Facebook. Those of you that are friends with me on Facebook, I know you've seen them, where I've put a post up or a meme and some guy says, Oh, I just love your humor. You su have such a beautiful smile. I love everything you post. Blah, 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 blah. I tried to send you a friend request, but really was unable. It didn't go through. If you would so kindly send me a friend request. Blink, blink, blink. So I can get to know you. Most of those are scams based Pretty much like that online dating scams. How do I know this? Well, I think I told you in the past, one of these times I had someone, Eric T. Hill. He goes by Eric Hill, General Hill, a whole lot of other names. And I thought, just for grins and giggles, I'll, I'll accept. Blah, blah, blah. I'll talk with him on Messenger. We talked one evening for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, wasn't very long. I didn't give him a whole lot of information, gave him just a little teeny bit here and there, you know. 
And he's like, I'd like to contact you, you know. Uh, but the best way is to go through this service, Google, you know, to protect me because, you know, I'm in Syria right now, blah, 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 that kind of thing. Folks, if you ever do hook up that way, do a search on that person because that person is very well known. He is actually a general, the Commandant at the Jackson, Florida, um, I think it's Air Force Base, maybe Army Base. He has a wife, he has children. He's not in Syria. No, not. So, <laughs> of course, the next morning, I get on and this fellow starts with, Hello, darling, how are you this morning? And I was like, click, block. So, yeah, watch out for those scams. Suspicious retailers. I know we have all gotten these. An email that basically tells you that, um, well, this is a different scam. But we've all gotten that one that says PayPal or the Geek Squad. Thank you for purchasing this or whatever. And it's $7,000, $8,500. You know, any amount that seems a little outrageous for it. And then they tell you if this wasn't you to click on it. Don't ever click on anything in an email. Never. Don't ever. Generally, what I do, I had something that came up. I purchased a book before my debit card was compromised. I had purchased a book at Amazon with that old number. So, when it came time, because it wasn't released until in August, I get a message from Amazon saying there was a problem processing your um, payment. Now, there was a link to click on. I didn't click on. I went directly to Amazon itself, like I normally do. Looked into it. It was the old debit card number. I just had to update it with the new one. Everything was fine. This other one, though, is a little bit different. Cyber criminals set up a fake store online or on social media that offers products at cheaper than usual prices or for items you might urgently need. At checkout, you may not have the option to use a trusted third-party payment platform meaning criminals could directly access your information. They may also ask for payment by wire or gift card so that it can't be traced. If the object price of it is seems to be too good to be true, it probably is. If you've never heard of that website or that merchant, research the web ask friends or family. Also, look to see if the website is secure and list a phone number or physical mailing address you can easily verify. You can also search for the company on the Better Business Bureau. As always, if you made a purchase, contact your credit card company, you know, or to stop payments, those kind of things. Now, Here's another thing. Many times you do not get the country of origin of where it is. He'll say it's based in California. But it's not. It's coming out of China or Russia. That's why you need to research these very thoroughly so you're not getting screwed. All right. Bogus tech support. You know, we've all got that pop-up window while you're on the web or a phone call from tech support saying it's claiming your computer has malware they ask for payment to fix defects or for remote access to your computer do not do that do not only do it through trusted companies someone you absolutely trust um, And software companies, they just don't call you. They do not. Tech support does not call you. That pop-up pop -up window, I will tell you, my mother-in-law was playing checkers online with someone and a 
pop-up window came up saying there was a problem with her payment of her um, cable company um, with her internet access, that kind of thing. So she clicked on the link. She went and she paid. Gave them access to her checking account. And uh, then she called Thomas afterwards. She was really upset. She said, somehow, I, I don't know, I think I might have made a mistake. He said, Mother, you should, because she always got a hard copy in the mail. You should always go to the bill, look up the telephone number, and call the company that way. She didn't do that. She just followed the, the pop-up advice. So, she lost $15,000 between that and the following morning. Now she went directly to the bank. My brother-in-law went with her. They actually made him to where he was also on the account. They also uh, closed that account completely. They did get everything but $2,000 back. Um, but of course, because she was protected with the bank, she didn't lose anything but $50. Um, so, don't click on those pop-up ads. Government imposters. You'll receive a request from someone claiming to be a U.S. government agent urging you to settle a debt right away. Pay money up front in order to quickly receive some type of federal funds or to verify your personal information. They claim you could be arrested, lose your home, or have your Social Security benefits withheld. No, 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 no. Always do your homework. Do not follow that. Government will never ask you by phone or email to pay back debt with an untraceable prepaid debit card, gift card, or a wire transfer. Just does not happen. Fraudulent email solicitations. You know, we already talked about that. Um, the Nigerian Prince Cheap Service Home or Count of Years has been deactivated. That one's been around a lot lately with Amazon and Verizon, Comcast. Um, so they ask you to take immediate, immediate action by sending them money or providing account information via leak in the body of the email. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't ever do it. And as always, if something does happen, you do it by accident, then make sure that you have uh, gotten in contact with your final financial institution. Now, I know a lot of you have seen this where, and it usually happens when someone clones our accounts, that you'll have someone that sends you a friend request, and then when they send you a friend request, they'll send you by messenger. Have you heard the good news? Have you heard about the U.S.? Whatever. Or Facebook uh, awards or some nonsense. It's a scam. Don't fall for it. Don't follow it. There are also coronavirus and government program scams. There are all kinds of them. Um, there have been a lot where scammers have set up fake testing sites to collect your personal medical information and sold fake at home tests online. Always get your test from a certified person. Generally tests can be gotten you know at CVS, uh, Rite Aid, Walgreens, Walmart, Target. They have a drug pharmacy and if you're eligible for free they generally will give you a kit. The government sends out kits you do have to call the government to get signed up for that. So, um, just, just keep that in mind. Phone scams, robocalls. I'm going to tell you about one that I had today that I thought was rather interesting. Phone rang and I answered it. And the person said to me, um, I need to know how much mileage is on your car. I said, why? And they, they used my husband's name. They didn't use my name. Use my husband's name. I need to know what the mileage is on your car. I said, what do you need that information for? 
well, we need to update your insurance. I said, no, I don't think so, and hung up. Why? Because the car is no longer in his name, first off. And I know my insurance agent personally, so he doesn't sound like he's from India or Sri Lanka or Bangladesh or wherever it is. So, be careful of that. Text. You may receive a text message from an unknown number and email address. They're usually trying to send you to a scammer's website and link. A lot of those are like after you pay your bills, you'll get this message supposedly from Verizon, or, you know, or your T-Mobile or whoever you have. It says, congratulations, you paid your bill. Here's a free gift. It's a scam. Impersonators, you know, they still are around. IRS personnel, police, survey takers, delivery people, well-known companies that try to threaten you and gain your trust. You know, like the Amazon one. No, don't. They want you to give out your social security number. Uh, they may use scare tactics about your social security number, criminal record or account, and ask for your personal information, account, credit card information. Don't do it. Don't do it. And you know, when you have gone to a website and it comes up that you're, um, that you've contracted a virus, gives you a place to send to click on to clean it. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Now, this one is rather interesting. You know, the QR codes that are on everything, you know, that's the little square and you hold your phone up to it and it'll take you to a website or whatever. Um, you know, generally it's to read the restaurant menu or make a payment during pandemic. They were using those. And scammers, though, however, have locked on to that as well. Um, they will put them in inconspicuous, conspicuous spots. And scanning the code could prompt you to make a small purchase or enter, enter your credentials onto a lookalike website. Be very careful with that. Here's another one. I didn't think this was possible. Sim swapping. This is where a thief steals your number and assigns it to a new SIM card in a phone they control. It's the same process you go through when you get a new phone and the mobile carrier gives you a new SIM card. The scammer uses your SIM card to steal your information to log into your accounts and either enter a verification code or reset the account password using the code or link sent to their phone. Um, you might be able to contact your mobile carrier um, to add temporary um, extra security or temporary freeze number um, if you see that happening so just be aware um, also make sure your accounts will let you um, use a non SMS multi-factor um, authentication object in which you provide two pieces of proof to verify your identity and usually this may be an alternate email account, um, a different phone number, you know, whatever. All right, one-time password bots. This is called OTP, which is one-time password bots, to trick people into sharing the authentication codes that are sent to them via text or email, or that they have to look up an authentication app or device. Now, I had a friend this weekend thought it was a friend she had sent me a message by messenger now we've talked that way before but she'd asked me how I was doing and you know I told her I was up and down and I've been having some grief and then the next thing that came out of her oh well that's all good um, I'm in a kind of bit of a bind um, my car got towed and I need some money 
um, I'm locked out of my Facebook account, so I need you to give me your telephone number so that they can send a verification code so I can get into it, and then you can send me the code. I just ignored it. I knew it was not my friend because she would not say, oh, good, when I was telling her about the upsets up and down. I knew she wouldn't say that, so keep that in mind. Zell scams. <sighs> They'll email, text, or call you pretending to work for your bank or credit unions. Fraud department, they claim they have a thief who's trying to steal your money through Zell, and they have to walk you through fixing the problem. Then they'll instruct you to send the money to yourself, but the money actually goes to their account. Don't fall for it. Go into your bank. Cryptocurrency scams. This is another one. <sighs> People fear the missing out of investment opportunities. These scams can take on different forms, but often involve fake prizes, contests, giveaways, or early investment opportunities. Scammers may impersonate celebrities or popular cryptocurrency websites to lure victims into sending them money, sharing login information, and investing in a project. Crypto exchange accounts have been the target of, a, of these bots because you might not be able to get your crypto back if the scammer drains your account. We already talked about the uh, other thing. We've also talked about the online purchase scams. Employment scams. There's another new one. I have a friend that's been going through this looking for employment. They will use enticing, hard-to-detect lures to target people who've been out of work. Some scammers take a slow approach with interviews and legitimate-seeming operation. They then collect personal information from your employment forms and tell you to buy equipment or training. They do not do that, and sometimes they will even send you a large paycheck and ask you to send the extra back. That is a play on the overpayment scam. Any job opportunities that involve receiving money and sending funds to another account, receiving, reshipping packages, these are called money mules or reshipping mules, which are often part of an illegal operation. And you could be personally uh, liable, so be careful. As always, research any of the companies before you make donations. Be careful with your phone. If you think it's spam, you know, don't respond. Just hang up. Ignore the call. Don't refund or forward overpayments. Uh, look for suspicious, suspicious payment requirements. And continue to monitor your identity. So, um, just keep that in mind. When you're out there, it's a scary world with these scammers. They have all kinds of things. Another one is the pre-approved letter or email saying you've been pre-approved for a credit card or a bank loan. Sometimes you have to pay an upfront fee when you sign up. While credit cards do charge annual fees, they never ask you to pay them when you apply. Don't do that. Debt relief and credit repair scams. I'm sure some of you have received these. I know I have, especially with Thomas's death. Um, basically, you know, sending you a way to consolidate loans and that kind of stuff. And it's not an actual company. Lottery scams. You know, as usual, same old thing. You've won. You know? No, you haven't. And one of the other ones that I see a lot on Facebook is... You reply to somebody's question or some page's question. Someone says, you won. DM me immediately. Contact me immediately. Scams. All right, guys, that's it for today. As always, be careful with your money. Be careful with your information. I don't give any numbers over the phone whatsoever, ever. Nothing. Not health cards, not... Social Security number, not bank accounts, none of it, ever. 
I know those people I can trust and I go directly to those people. So be wise with your money. Now, be kind to one another, be kind to yourself. Don't be kind to the scammers. They deserve every bit of illness they can get. But while you're out there, enjoy this big beautiful world we live in. And I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.